and wherever you like to listen to podcasts at Talk Real Estate Roundtable. If you would like a one-on-one -on -one consultation with me and my team to discuss your real estate needs, you can connect with me at bostonconnect.com or 781-826-8000. Now sit back, relax, take good notes, and let's talk real estate. And hello to all my South Shore neighbors. You are listening to Talk Real Estate Roundtable. My name is Melissa Wallace, and I am joined live and in studio with the one and only Sue Bollinger. Hello. Hello. Welcome back. Thank you for having me back again. Oh, of course. I know I asked you what this morning, and you were like, yeah, sure, whatever. <laughs> so that's awesome. I love that about you. You're just like, yeah, of course I'll be on the show. Give me um, a topic and let's go. Yeah, I know. I did. I sent you a couple topics, and they were, they were sort of similar to each other but um i do i think that i put number one as the number one and that's the one that you picked because i liked it the best yeah well it makes sense and it's relevant <laughs> it, so it is and you know we try to be relevant here on talk real estate roundtable especially here at boston connect real estate and the sun is shining today and it's like 80 degrees already yeah i did um julia and i ordered shakes um from key nutrition in kingston Ooh, we love yum. it there love 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 it there and um I drove, I, I took the liberty of having a drive today mm -hmm. and I got in my car and I think it's because my car was sitting in the sun, but it was like 86 degrees it yes. said, and I was like, oh yep. my gosh. My car just said 80 degrees. So I'm like, oh, yeah. I, I'm going with that. <laughs> it's a beautiful day. Let's keep them coming. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, finally. <laughs> but yes, the sun is still shining, even though it's six, uh, well now it's 616. Um, yeah. But uh, yeah, it, it's, uh, it's a beautiful day and it was a beautiful day here at the office too. Yes, yeah. absolutely. Um, lots of real estate happening, lots of lots of yeah. buying and selling going on right yeah, now. Yeah, we are so busy and it's just like, you know, everyone always asks me like, oh, what's your busiest time of year? I go, I don't know, pick, pick a day and it's yeah. busy. <laughs> it used to be back in the day, it was, you know, the winter was the slowest time yeah. and then, you know, the market would like pick up in the spring and then the summer would be de dead again. But that hasn't happened in four years. <laughs> yeah, I, yeah, I don't know what that is all about because it's it's just sort of I don't I don't know what it is the past couple of years we've just been so busy all year round which is an amazing problem to have absolutely everyone is keeping me very busy here at Boston Connect Real Estate yes um, you, you definitely are busy. <laughs> yeah. um, and congratulations to you. Oh, well, thank You're you You're serving so much. another term here in Pembroke. I am on um, the school committee for another three years. Another three years. Looking so, forward to it. Yeah, congratulations. <laughs> thank you. Um, I would have voted for you, but I live in Halifax. Yeah, so. you moved out of Pembroke. So. <laughs> I moved out of Pembroke. <laughs> Sorry. I, I appreciate the sentiment, though. <laughs> you had my vote in spirit. Does that yeah. count? <laughs> yeah. And, and I have to say, I'm just so grateful uh, to the town of Pembroke, you know, that yeah. they reelected me. Um, I appreciate their faith in me, and so yeah. I'm looking forward to making everyone proud. Yes, <laughs> and you make us proud here at Boston Connect Real Estate, and we have faith in you as well, well to sell real you. estate. <laughs> um, we have Larry in studio tonight. Hi, Larry. Hi, Larry. Hi, I've misplaced my headset. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> we can, I'm glad you heard us say hi, though. Um, Larry is in studio, so if you want to join in on the discussion tonight, you can text or call WATD at 781-837-4900. Again, 781-837-4900. We are also live on Facebook and I think maybe Instagram, too. Um, YouTube, LinkedIn, all those fun pages. So uh, be sure to follow us, Boston Connect Real Estate. I know we're live on Sharon Costa McNamara as well. She might be watching us as Hi, well. Um, <clears throat> speaking of being busy in real estate, she's very busy in real estate as yes, well. She, she does is. sell real estate in case anybody doesn't know that. Right. <laughs> um, you know, she's not just my co-host. Yes. Um, so she's she's busy dealing with some offers, which is great. Yes. Um, I know they have a couple closings this week, her and Mary. So, um, you know, they're just, they're on a roll. Yeah. They always I, are, though. Yeah, they are. Great um, team. But I did ask you to go on the show with me tonight. So you, you've been on the show before. Yes. Um, I want to give you a moment to reintroduce yourself to all of our listeners in case they didn't uh, catch one of your past shows with me. Sure. My name is Sue Bollinger, obviously. Mm -hmm. um, so I've been selling real estate for over 20 years. Wow. I'm not going to go. I'm not even going to start with like how many more than 20 because now I feel like I'm just old. So. Over 20 <laughs> years. Over 20. I'll just say that. <laughs> And um, I've been a full-time realtor for all of that time. So um, I do this full-time. It's my passion. It's my love. I really, really love uh, working with both buyers and sellers. Mm -hmm. 
So I do both, like sort of 50 50. Mm-hmm. Um, do you have a favorite child? A favorite? <laughs> either either oh. buying or selling, helping buyers over sellers. <laughs> I, I actually really, really love being a buyer's agent. I knew you were going to say that, <laughs> which is why I knew you were going to pick this topic out of yes. the five I sent you today. Like, that's why they were all sort of geared towards buyers, yes. <laughs> because I know that you love working with buyers. I do. I love it. It's like one of my favorite things. I it, Sometimes it takes two years to find a house for somebody, and I don't even care because I love it. I love you know, it's like a whole process. I've become part of the family. Yeah. I've said that many times with my clients. Like, now I'm officially a member. I've worked with your mother, your sister, your aunt. And now I'm a member <laughs> of the family. Now I'm a member of the family. <laughs> so, yeah, but it's fun. Um, yeah. So, I, I'm sorry. I'm distracted. My mother. Uh, oh, my gosh. My mother said, I have a favorite child. Ha, 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 ha. And then she says, Charlie, which is her cat. Oh, no, <laughs> Charlie. I thought it was going to be me for sure. <laughs> well, the pets are sometimes favorites. I know. So well, I, yeah. I kind of uh, understand. I only have uh, pet uh, children, so they're my favorite, yes. I suppose. Yeah, I get um, it. <laughs> <laughs> And I could see your gears sort of turning because you have, what, four kids? I Well, I have four, seven total. Oh, well, seven total. So Harris you're like, I... do I have a favorite child? Like, no, 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 buyers <laughs> or sellers. <laughs> Yeah, no, seven total between Paris and I. But yeah. yeah, so four that are I've been raising for the last uh, three that are complete. They're on their own. So. Yeah, they are on their own. Yeah, they're yeah. married and all that fun stuff. <laughs> <laughs> Um, but yes, yeah, so tonight we are going to be talking about buyers, but we are going to be talking about um, some of our top considerations when buying a home. It's not just what's the price. It's also what goes into that price. Yes. Um, and, you know, I know that you, you've you purchased a home in your lifetime. I just recently purchased my first home. Um, and it it is not just the sticker price. It's really not just it's the not sticker. you know and we're gonna sort of dive into it a little bit but it's not just saving um you know money for that down payment it's not just saving money for your closing costs it's what happens after the closing day absolutely those are things that you have to consider as well um and it was my meeting with jasmine um jasmine actually Jasmine Glasgow from Maritime Mortgage. She was on the show with Sharon and I on Saturday. Yes, um, she was my um, my loan officer, and it was my meeting with her where she was like, "All right, it's not just about you know this money on paper. It's what happens after closing that yeah, you so have this to is really do good. considerations for." This is actually good because now you've been a homeowner for how long? Yeah, uh, uh, closed in November. In so November, so five, six, seven months. Yes. Yeah, so this is about- this is actually perfect because yeah. I'm actually working with a buyer right now. It's one of my son's friends. He's amazing. He's yeah. so smart. And yeah, you met with him here, right? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Okay. And he's so smart and he is um, out looking for his first investment property. Wow. Good you for You know, him. like young kid, he's just like really mm-hmm. on it. And mm-hmm. I'm really proud of him. And, you know, so we're starting to look at properties and I think he came off the bat. He's like, okay, well, I'm going to buy an investment property. And you have to sit down and think about like, okay, what is the total yeah. cost of that investment property? Mm-hmm. It's not just the down payment. You know, you, yeah, you get the down payment, you get the loan, yeah. you buy the house. Then, and then what? All of a sudden you have <laughs> so many more things to think about. Yeah. And I think the most important part about it is setting a realistic budget. So, yes. you know, what is it, like we're saying after closing, you leave the closing table, what happens after that? It's like, what can you afford monthly? Not just with your mortgage, but there's also property taxes, there's right. insurance, maintaining the house, if anything needs to be done to it before moving in. Right. You know, these are all things that you have to consider. And that is why I'm sure you run into this a lot is, you know, buyers, they might want to get into a property with um, maybe a contractor or somebody that so they can get quotes on things. Right. It's not necessarily to like get scared because of how much money it's going to cost or it's not a, a tactic for buyers like to sort of be able to walk away, you know. So I feel like there's some some stigma. Oh, yeah. People there's some think stigma. that's what yeah. the home inspection is all about, but it's really not. There's some stigma with, you know, you know, sellers or listing agents even that are just like, well, you know, do you really need to get into the house and have a quote? Like, we're not trying to hide anything. We just want to, you know, make sure that, you know, we are budgeting for these things after the fact. Absolutely. So, like, I went into, I remember showing 
him, like a two family in, you know, in one of the Massachusetts towns, I won't say where, and <laughs> it needed, um, you know, two new water heaters and, you know, a new, mm -hmm. one of the new heating systems needed was like, you know, probably 80 years old. Yeah. Still running somehow. And, you know, <laughs> like it had, you know, it had what put, you know, it was an older house, probably lead paint. Yeah. You probably needed to replace, you know, the, the electrical needed to be updated. Yeah. So it needed know? some work. It needed a bunch of work. Yeah. And so here's this first time buyer. Yeah who has no idea how much this stuff costs. Yeah. And he's the, you know, the most first time buyers really don't. And, and so some, some can be realistic and some are like, well, yeah. you know, um, that's easy. I'll just fix it a little at a time as I go. How much yeah. do you think something like this will cost? Yeah. And it's like, well, mm. this is a really old house. I mean, you could, you could be talking, it could potentially be, you know, 150 to $200,000, depending on like what needs to be done to the house. Yeah. You know, so you have to really get your quotes in place, to talk to contractors, mm -hmm. find out how much things cost. I think it's a little bit different when it comes to an investment property because True. you usually, for an investment, it, it's probably a multifamily and you're going to have other people living in that, um, you know, in those units and stuff. Right. So those are some of the things that probably have to be done they have to up be done. front. Um, with a single family home, if you're looking for something, that, you know, not a flipper or anything, you know, you're looking to live in a home or a condo or whatever, you know, things can happen over time. Um, and, yeah. you know, there were things that I wanted to do, like the floors and the painting. Like, I knew that I would never do them <laughs> after I've moved in. Right. So I just upfront cost paid for those things. Yes, but I got smart. quotes. Smart. You yeah. know, and um, I think <clears throat> Sharon, uh, we, we talked about this on the show too, the, the, um, the gentleman who who paints here and has painted at Sharon's house and everything, Kevin Senna, he um, he came over, gave a quote of my whole house, and that was my closing gift from Sharon and Mark McNamara was having my That's whole amazing. house painted. But you know, it it's things like that where you know I got a quote for the floors, I got a quote, I had you know carpet replaced, these right. things. I knew that I would never do them unless you did <laughs> unless right I did now. it before. Now. Now that I'm living there, I know that I need a new roof. I know that I need new windows. I know that I, you know, yeah. I'd love to do a new kitchen. I'd love to do a new bathroom. But can I live with them right now? Are they broken? Are they working? Yes. So Everything's fine. So everything is fine. It. Yeah. But sometimes, like, I know, so the, you know, if somebody's buying, this particular person is buying an investment property, but he's going to live there mm -hmm. as well. So mm -hmm. it is his, still his first home. Yeah. One of the things that is important to consider is, you know, the electrical, for example, is it updated? Mm -hmm. Do you have knob and tube wiring or do you have like those old, um, yeah. I can, the name's blanking on me. The, you know, the, the glass uh, fuses. Yeah, fuses. Thank you. <laughs> you said it. <laughs> I just agreed with you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, you know, I, you know, it's important to get prices from insurance companies because some insurance, most insurance companies won't. Yeah insure you so you have to get like a specialized insurance yeah. policy that covers well yeah that's the that's the other thing you know when i was going through my process i did get i think four quotes for just homeowners insurance you yeah. know and i i just sent a lot of it to um george post who works with jasmine at uh, maritime mortgage i think he used to do insurance and stuff like this so he was uh, quote me don't quote me yeah um <laughs> he just knew a lot about it so i sent him a lot of the quotes and he was like yeah you know this this and this whatever and i ended up going with a quote that i got from um i use jordan insurance in weymouth and always have my whole family always has so i have like i, I just go through the broker um for like all of the insurance that i've had and he gave me the best quote actually yeah. you know so it was somebody that i already knew but it was good to get other quotes from other companies as well right i ended up going with you know somebody that i probably already would have but again I, it's like, I didn't even really think about it. I was like, oh my gosh, yeah, I need, I mean, I had renter's insurance before, yeah. but it's like, whatever. <laughs> but these are all things you don't think about. Yeah. You think, oh, I'll just buy the house and move in and it'll all be good. And I'll just have my mortgage payment, Yeah, you know, and then I'll just have to pay the light bills or whatever. Mm -hmm. But there's a lot more that goes into it when you own a home. So you have to consider all costs. So it's really important that you work with somebody who's yeah. been doing it for yeah. a while and understands the, the nuances of home ownership and what what certain things, you know, where to send you mm -hmm. for the quotes. Yeah. 
you know? Well, that was the other thing, you know? It's like if you've never done something before, like, where do you know to start? Absolutely. <laughs> you can't Google everything, okay? No, you can't. <laughs> <laughs> you can't Google everything, but that's why it's so important to have a team in your corner right. during this process because – Especially if you've never done it before. Right. I mean, it's just they they know the questions that you should be asking. And even if you're not asking them, they'll give you the answers to them. Right. So it's like, oh, hey, like, just so you know, you're going to need to get quotes on this. You're going to need to get this. And you're like, oh, I didn't even think of that. Yeah, exactly. But there's so many nuanced details mm -hmm. um, that goes into it, whether it's a single family home or whatever. So. You know, obviously there's experienced buyers, you know, who people have sold, bought and sold before and yeah. they have a little bit of an idea and that even then I say, yeah. you still need to get quotes. Like yeah. how much does it cost if there's like, you know, you see a little termite damage in a corner and you want to get it treated. Like mm -hmm. how much does something like that cost? You got to, you know, know where to go to get the quotes. Yeah. There's, I would say like selling real estate, um, there's never the same deal ever. No. Every deal is Every so different. Every deal is different. Every house is different. <laughs> Some are easier than others. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So you never know like if you're going to end up like what, what problems you're going to encounter during the time yeah so <clears throat> yeah tough. but i think that you learn something during every say even even the easy ones that are just like so smooth sailing it's like you know why it went so well right um whether it's the client or the people that you know were part of the deal or just anything like you just know you know there's always a lesson in everything yeah, so absolutely you know and you try to bring the good um to the next one yeah absolutely um, but yeah, I mean, setting a realistic budget, it's its its just not just, like I said, it's not just saving for the down payment. It's not just saving for your mortgage payment every month. It's, right. you know, what does the mortgage payment entail? Is it, does it also, you know, cover your taxes, your insurance? Right. Um, we talked about maintenance that I was going to need afterwards. Yep. Um, so that type of stuff. HOA fee. If you, right. If you live in a community or a condo complex that has a HOA yeah, and if you're buying a house, for example, for four hundred thousand, and it needs fifty thousand dollars worth of work, mm -hmm. and you do not, you don't have, you and four hundred is the top of your range, you know, you have to reconsider whether or not that yeah. property is for you because it's a lot of money that you have to invest in the house later. Yeah, yeah, you, know, you have to really look at the overall cost. Well, I think that the most important. Thing about buying a house ever is understanding the true cost yes. of home ownership. So 100%. like understanding what it really costs every single month. And I know that's hard yeah. to budget out. And like, even for me, I had actually reached out to Jess Page, who is a full-time realtor here at Boston Connect Real Estate as well. She lives in Halifax, the same town that I do. And I like I tried looking on the website and I couldn't figure out like when the water bill, like I'd never gotten a water bill before. So right. I didn't know. I thought it was gonna, <laughs> like, I pay the water bill here at the office. So like, I know what that costs, but there's irrigation here. There's stuff like that. But it's like, I do my laundry. I take a shower at home. Right. Like right. I don't take a shower here. You know, so I was like, <laughs> I don't know how comparable it'll be and stuff like that. And right. I had asked her, I was like, do you know when we get our water bill? Um, and then literally the next day I get the water bill in the mail. And I was like, I just like opened it really slow. I was like, oh my gosh, what is it? It was like $73. Oh. <laughs> I was like, oh, I think I can swing it. <laughs> I think I can swing it. <laughs> Why you in that with an in-ground pool when you have no. to refill every, you know. You know, that's that makes me a little bit grateful that I don't think I can put a pool in my backyard. <laughs> uh, not that I can afford well. to do it right now. I should not be doing a pool before a roof or anything like that. <laughs> but, uh, but yeah, I was like, oh. I, th I think I could swing it. I think I'm yeah. okay, <laughs> you know? So, yeah, but these exactly. are things that like, you just didn't know that those were sort of the unknowns, um, it, you know. And one other important thing yeah. that people can, should consider is how big is the house? Mm -hmm. Because, you know, if you're coming from like a little two bedroom apartment and you're moving into a single family home that's 2,400 square feet, yeah. your, your utility bills are going to be significantly different. <laughs> Or if you're moving from Mary and Sam's house into your own, exactly. it's going to be a little bit different. It's going to be a little bit different when you don't have to share. A little bit different. I am grateful that I no longer have a car payment, though. So that's, well, that's great. Helpful. That is <laughs> Very really helpful. Good. So that goes towards the other bills. 
Yes. Um, but yeah, those are things that, you know, I never really had thought about before. I mean, of course, I dreamed about being a homeowner, but I don't dream about, oh, I can't wait to pay the first water bill. I can't right. wait to pay the trash bill every year. Like, the, yeah. that's not really the glamorous part about owning a house. Exactly. But you know what? At the end of the day, it's yours. Right. Um, so, you know, I, I sort of had to budget that. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> the unknown. I had to budget my $73. <laughs> Well, $73 when, you're, you, when you own your own home and you're yeah. the only one responsible for the bills. I mean, yeah. up, that can be significant when they, yeah. you know, you pile one on top of the other. It becomes an issue. <laughs> yeah, it, do, it does. It, it does. Um, but, you know, like I said, I, I think understanding the true cost of homeownership yes. is probably the most important part about buying a home. Absolutely. Um, and I know that you work with a lot of buyers. Um, you're at your... I mean, you're a very successful agent anyways, but I feel like you, you, you are heavy on the buyers, right? Yes. Yeah. I am heavier on the buyers, yeah. but I do both. And I, I love selling, obviously. So, yeah. but. Um, if you want to join in on the discussion again, you can call Larry at WATD 781-837-4900. We are live as well. I'm watching it on uh, Facebook. Oh, Mackenzie McNamara is watching. Hi, Mackenzie. Hi, Mackenzie. Rob Hackle is watching as well. So Hello, hi. Rob. Um, <clears throat> but yeah, anything else you want to say about the whole, um, you know, uh, maybe the money part of it? Just make sure that you're weighing in all costs. Make sure you get a good, um, you know, mortgage broker who can go through the numbers, m give you a realistic expectation of what your mm -hmm. payment's going to be before you actually put the offer in. Yeah. Well, I also think that it's important to work with your buyer's agent yes. in coming together with an appropriate purchase price as well. Yes, so, absolutely. you know, uh, we were, I'm calling it the sticker price. It, it's not always that it could be less. It could be more. It could be whatever it is that you put on your offer. Right. Um, right. but working with your buyer's agent, you're going to come, you know, your agent is going to be looking for comparables and, and that's their job. Their right. job is to show you the value of that house. Um, you know, anything more than that value sort of range that they show you is an emotional value. So whatever right. emotional value you want to put onto that on top of that is your prerogative. Right. Um, but you know, I just, I, I feel like, you know, and you should, you know, this, that the buyer's agent's responsibility when putting in an offer is showing the value of that house at Absolutely. that point, you know, yeah. it's not always, you're not relying on the listing agent to come up with the price, you know, no. you sort of, you do your research and you sort of show your client um the buyer yes it's very sort of the value of the house you, you need to know the value of the house and in this market you know you're a lot of people are going over asking and sometimes that's okay as long as you've weighed in the costs mm -hmm. you know yeah but like you know you you know you want to stay within your pre-approval amount because mm -hmm. it, it they pre-approve you for that amount for a reason so yeah you know. Well, there was, a, I think, a point, and you might have even said it on a show that you'd been on, too, is that, you know, I think during COVID, maybe when prices were sort of going all over the place, that you were showing your clients homes that were under or well under their budget, um, so they could be competitive. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. If, you're, if your uh, budget is 400000 you and you're looking at houses at 405 you're yeah. never going to get anything <laughs> yeah <laughs> not in this market yeah i uh so. if it's priced accordingly you you know you you might not but if it's overpriced if it if it's overpriced your buyer's agent will tell you that they'll absolutely. show you they'll show you it you can look at the days on market yeah and so. the market the market will show you let me yes. let me tell you that the market absolutely. will show you if the the home is overpriced that's true because it won't sell right away <laughs> <laughs> um <clears throat> okay next part uh, we want to talk about is the importance of location. Location, um, location, location. Yes. And this was another thing that we saw, um, you know, during COVID times, the craziness of COVID times is a lot right. of um, people moving um, sort of outside of their realm of what they thought, where they thought that they were going to land. Right. Considering other towns, um, especially in a market where there's not a lot of inventory. So you sort of have to expand your horizon. And Absolutely. Sort of consider towns that you might not um, typically consider. Budget could also be um, a factor in that as yeah. well. Yeah. How long is your commute? You yeah. know, um, what do you, what is your, I think the question you have to ask yourself is what are you looking for in a location? Mm -hmm. That's important to ask. You mm -hmm. know, like, do you want to be near a commuter rail? 
Do you want to be near a highway? Does it matter? Maybe you work from home and it doesn't matter and you can go yeah. out in the country and maybe you're retired and you don't yeah. have to commute anywhere. Well, you know, I'm sure um, there are buyers that consider school systems to yep, be, absolutely. you know, a part of their um, consideration when, when purchasing a home, you know, parks or shops, you know, the safety, those are yeah. all things that um, a buyer should um sort of research on their own yeah that's sort of um you know whatever their comfort level is you're going to find that in your own research not from hearing from an agent or anything right. so you know i wouldn't necessarily suggest asking your agent oh is this a safe neighborhood well if the agent doesn't live in there and they don't you know they're not there a hundred percent of the time they can't give you an accurate just de depiction of that nor should they nor should they yeah so there's fair housing laws yeah your agent is bound um by law not to discuss uh, you know, locate this, this specific things that you can't say like, oh, well, you know, that purple person, you know, lives next door and the yeah. green one's on the other side. So maybe you shouldn't be here. like, you're not allowed to talk about yeah. these things. Um, so sometimes people will come to me and they'll be like, well, what do you think of this neighborhood? Well, I'm not allowed to say. Yeah. And your taste might be different. <laughs> Absolutely. I might be looking for something completely different than you. Yeah. I, you know, so yeah. like it, it might seem like a very in innocent question. Yeah. Like it doesn't seem like you're like hurting anyone or breaking any laws, but like the agent is not allowed to discuss it. Yeah. I mean, we could um, sort of provide you a resource like, oh, here's the town website that, um, you know, of the town, like just send you the link of the website, yeah. <laughs> the general <laughs> first page of the website of the town and just be like, oh, this is, would be a great resource for you to do some research, whether it's, you know, Know, crime rates or you know school systems or anything like that that might interest a buyer yeah um you know just go to the town website or go to town hall you know you or, can always yeah and I'll, I'll say these are the amenities of this town yeah they have you know this school system which is ranked by u.s mm -hmm. reports you know here or yeah. you know they have this football team that's done fantastic over the last couple of years yeah um then i'll also talk in terms of value of the town. So the median value, home value over the last six months. Yeah. Or the medium home value, you know, the, the average home sale price. Mm -hmm. You know, so sometimes if I can say like, well, it's somebody will say, well, what what's this neighborhood like? I'll say, okay, well, I did comps in this neighborhood and over the last, last six months, the average sale price was X. Yeah. Like that's what I can say. I can't say like, you know, anything really yeah. else. Also some research that you can do is any potential, um, additional developments that might be going in or anything um that would be around the sur like in the right. surrounding area that might impact their decision Absolutely. to purchase a home um you can certainly talk about that whether yeah. it's you know in fact we have a duty to really yeah. as a buyer's agent yeah to look into that <clears throat> for you and yeah. ask questions and show you where to look for that information yeah so. And and I think that that is also very, very important because I know you, you don't want to get a phone call in one to two years yes. and be like, how come you didn't tell me that, you know, all of these trees were going to be knocked down and a whole development was going in there and blah, 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 blah. It's like, yeah, yeah. do the research beforehand, yeah, absolutely. you know? Yeah. Um, you, you have to know, like, this is where the boundary is and the people behind you that own it, you know, could be doing A, B, C, D. You yeah. Know, you, like, you have to be able to talk in those terms. Yeah. You know, so that those are the kind of things you can ask your agent and you should. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Um, another thing, you know, about location, maybe the actual like location of the house. So, you know, the, the size of it, the, um, the layout, the condition of the home, um, sort of the lot size, the, all those things, yeah. um, are considerations as well. Yeah. Um, again, back to the first point we talked about, mm -hmm. if your budget is 400,000 and you happen to find a 2,400 square foot house, you still have to figure out how to heat it. Yeah. Pay the electric bill yeah you know fix up all the things that are wrong with it so you know um it's, it's important to sit down with your realtor and make a list of you know what what do you want out of a house mm -hmm. are you someone who's hand who likes to do projects and fix things up or are you someone who's never done anything at all and you don't know how to fix anything those are really important things to tell your agent because you know you don't want to be shown you know, these properties that, you know, are 
falling apart that need, you know, a new roof and new siding and maybe like some wind, some sills or whatever it has mm -hmm. sill damage somewhere. Mm -hmm. Like if it needs a bunch of work and you're not handy and you have to hire someone to do all of these things, like that's important for your agent to know. Yeah. So getting back to location, I sort of skipped ahead a little bit um, without realizing, but, uh, you know, getting back to location, I think that, you know, the important thing to sort of focus on for that is how it's going to affect your lifestyle. Um, and you know, if you're thinking about a long term investment as well. Right. So, you know, location is very important for those two things. So, you know, how it affects your lifestyle and what kind of lifestyle that you want. You know, do you want to be in a neighborhood? Do you want to be in more of a busy, you know, hustle and Absolutely. bustle type of area, you know, um, on a main road, in a cul-de-sac, in a community like or, you know, yeah. um, you want to something private you know those are all factors that come into play when it when it comes to location and they tie in to what to you know what kind of features you want mm -hmm. so what you should do is make a list for your realtor yeah and say like you know i i really want to be in a neighborhood and i really like to have uh you know you know three at least three bedrooms you know i i don't like living in i don't know maybe you don't like living in raised ranches so please only mm -hmm. show me like I, I never thought that I would buy a raised ranch. Yeah, and I, I actually did. love them because you get so much more space. <laughs> you know some what? People are like, I don't want a raised ranch. I live. I, 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 I when I go downstairs to do the laundry and stuff like that. And, and right now, my I have a um, finished room in my basement, yeah. and that's sort of like the cat's room. They like you know have free range of that room for now. And I go down there, and I'm like, oh my gosh, I for, I forget that I like, have all this. <laughs> I was like, what? Am, oh my gosh. <laughs> so let me get this straight. The, the, the cats have their own family room. Is yes. that where they play their video games? And stuff? Yes. <laughs> yes. That's where they play it's their the video kids. games. Yeah. That's Those the kids are room. Kid. They get their own room. Yeah. They, 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 yeah. They get free range of the entire house. They think that the entire house is just theirs. So yes. I'm just a guest well, there. Yeah. My kids as well. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so yeah. about the same. I don't know if I said it on air, but I, I, I did adopt a second cat. So oh. um, yeah. So his name is Benedict, but we call him Benny. Benny. Um, yeah. He's a tuxedo cat. I, I've never had a tuxedo cat before, um, but I rescued him from um, the Providence Rescue League or something. I don't know, whatever. Yeah. Somewhere in Providence. Um, and uh, yeah, I rescued him April 27th. Oh, congratulations. Thank you. Yes, he had his first vet visit yesterday because he was wheezing a little bit, but he has a upper respiratory oh. um, infection, probably from the shelter. Um, and did the kids get along? Um, <laughs> so Benny has never interacted with another cat before and he's three. So, um, and he wasn't neutered until he was surrendered. So he lived with somebody for three years. They decided to surrender him to a shelter in Providence. Um, and they neutered him there. So he was a little late on getting neutered. So like, uh, he's still sort of in his kitten phase. Um, and we didn't know how he would interact with, with Zoe, um, my firstborn, and, <laughs> but she, uh, I introduced them pretty slowly. Um, she's not the biggest fan, but she's getting used to him and he's just, he's so in love with her and he wants to play with her and she's Aww. like, I'll give you some attention, but yeah. I'll let you know when I'm no longer interested. Exactly. <laughs> and she does. <laughs> <laughs> so, but otherwise he's very healthy. He's a healthy Aww. boy and he's happy now. Yeah. Um, but yeah, um, so they have free range of the entire house and I never thought that I would even say that. And yeah, here I am. Yes, absolutely. Um, well, but see the benefits of a race ranch right there. Cause you've got the whole downstairs yeah. and extra space. So, yeah. And that's important. Soon right? I'm going to teach them like, go downstairs. Like yeah, you would, exactly. a, a, you know, a child or something. <laughs> Is that what you say to your kids? I don't know. Go play with go your play downstairs, toy. and they'll go downstairs, and they'll be fine. Go exactly. go hang out on your tower downstairs. But um, but yeah, that's a benefit of having a raised ranch. I mean, I Absolutely. never thought that. Um, again, I guess this is sort of my take on this part of the show is, you know, I, I was looking for a little ranch or a little cape or something, you know, not a lot of land, not a lot of right. it, and I ended up buying a raised ranch on 2.7 acres. <laughs> so, um, and it was just a great opportunity for yeah, me. And I, I sort of changed my mindset, um, and, and took advantage of the situation, um, or the opportunity. And, um, yeah, and now I love it. Yeah, I, I do. It's a great house. And my cats love it. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Uh, <laughs> Um, but yeah, that, that's sort of my take on that part of it. Sorry, I interrupted you. No, no, I was just going to say, like, that sort of leads into, you know, the importance of home inspections. Yeah. Which is really difficult in this market because, you know, um, you know, most everyone wants a home inspection. Mm -hmm. 
But in many cases, there's so many people waving them. Yeah. And it's so dangerous, I think. I it's it's really difficult to be a buyer's agent in, you know, you say like I, I really recommend especially first yeah. time buyers, I really recommend you do a home inspection because this so you learn so much about the house. Yeah. You know, I don't feel as bad if it's like somebody who's bought for the third or fourth time yeah. and they know what the yeah. home inspection you know, they have yeah. an idea of home ownership. But the first time buyers, that is so difficult. Yeah. You know? Yeah. I um I've been honest on the show. I, I waived my home inspection. Um yeah. and, and sort of everybody knows I I had a home under agreement beforehand. Did a home inspection and a, a water test on that house and everything. And it was more educational for me and finding out. Um, it had multiple owners. Somebody had done a lot of work to it themselves, and sort of there was a lot of unknowns. Yeah. With my house, I had seen the house a couple times. I um, Mark McNamara had done work on it. It, it had a single owner since 1964. Right. It was well maintained. Like I just sort of was comfortable. And um, the McNamara's live one mile down the road. So if right. anything was wrong, I it would for sense. sure be calling them. <laughs> <laughs> so Absolutely. it sort of made sense. And, you know, the the seller was kind enough to, you know, sort of leave a, hey, this is what I've paid monthly for X, Y, and Z. This yeah. is the thing, you know, this is what we did to the house over time and stuff like that. So I yeah. did feel comfortable, um, but mostly because I have so many people in my life that like, I know that I can call in an incident of something. And I have called McNamara Plumbing yes. since. So there you go. He knows the plumbing already because he's and he already knows the, Yeah, on. he knows the plumbing and he taught me a few things. And, you know, he's he's actually been over twice. So he helped me right before the winter time. You know, he showed me how to shut the water yeah. off and, yeah. you know, all the spigots outside and stuff like that. So And so the thing is, is you had somebody who yeah. could go with you to the house. He yeah. already knew the house. Yeah, and he could say like, oh, you know, it's a solid house. It doesn't need, you know, because he was he's in the trade. He like understands mm -hmm. he's been in the mm -hmm. trades all his life. So he understands. Yeah. What to look I for. I definitely and... wasn't comfortable the first house yeah. that I got an accepted offer on yeah. because and mostly it was because I knew that the seller had done a lot of work themselves and yeah. it ended up not being correct. So yes. that's something that I learned at my home inspection. So um, and was the reason why I walked away. Yeah. Um, you know, and not to say that, you know, somebody who's licensed and insured and owns a house can't do work on their own house or anything like that. It was right. just um, when you're not and you do things wrong. Right. <laughs> doesn't look good to a buyer. Right, exactly. Um, but yeah, so. I've seen more than a few of those. No, oh, yeah, I'm sure you have. How many houses do you think you've seen over the past 20 plus? I know you're not giving the right, uh, the, uh, the, the right number, yeah, but 20 it's, plus years. It's, it's been a lot because it does not not equal the amount I've sold. I can yeah. tell you that for sure. Yeah. It's like it, it definitely quadruples <clears throat> or more. Mm -hmm. the amount I've sold. If you could say maybe in the past five years, we'll say in the past five years, how many homes on average do you think a buyer sees before they get an accepted offer? In the past five years, yeah. I would say oh, that's scary. It's yeah. a, it depends yeah. on how realistic they are about yeah. the market. So it could be anywhere from, you know, if they're realistic and they know and they listen to my advice, mm -hmm. I would say 20 plus. But if they need, a, you know, they need to learn a lesson yeah. for a while, I would say 50 plus. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. like, you know, I might say, well, you know, like the it's, you know, a $400,000 house, but you know, you need to go over asking if you want to have any shot and you need to do A, B, C, and D. And I might give like all of these negotiation strategies. Yeah. And sometimes it's really difficult to mm -hmm. swallow the idea yeah. of like the things that you have to do yeah. to get the house. And so people don't really listen right off the bat. I wonder if I could make a list now. I probably yeah. can't remember every house that I saw, but I can definitely remember all the houses that I did put offers in on. Yeah. But, um... How many did you think you saw? Oh, over 20. Yeah, it, for sure. Yeah, over 20. Over 20. And that's somebody who's been in the real estate industry yeah. for. Yeah. Yeah. So. Yeah. Well, yeah. I, I would say well over 20. Yeah. Um, And, so, you know, I got to the point where I like I would pull up and be like, nope. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> nope. <laughs> I still went in. I did, uh, you know, gave the courtesy of right. still going in and I would still be like, 
Nope. Yeah. <laughs> Can't live there. Can't live here. Uh, you can tell it's got a peeling paint on the outside. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Not for me. Not for me. Exactly. Um, we only have about seven minutes left, but I feel right. like this has been a really great show. I mean, thanks I so much like, for joining me. Yeah, this has been fun. <laughs> um, so timing your purchase is a next part. Um, yeah. So, uh, you know, I don't think that there's ever an optimal time for buying a home. Well, I think it's just there used to be. There used to be. So like like I said, in the last four or five years, it, it's been completely different. But before that, um, you know, the winter, dead of the winter, like December, yeah. January, like nobody's well, I, out looking. I mean, there's all, you know. I, I guess what I meant was like, and I say this all the time, it's like, at least for sellers, it's, you know, the right time to sell or the right time to buy is when you're ready. So, That's true. That's you know, true. It's, it's, it's always buyers and there's yeah. always sellers. There's really. always buyers and there's always sellers. So, so like if somebody's like, oh, it's December and I need to move to, you know, Idaho for a new job. I don't know why anybody <laughs> would want to do that, but. <laughs> You Maybe know, like, some people in Massachusetts want to move to Idaho. At this point, that's very possible. So, <laughs> But, you know, maybe they want to move to Idaho or something and they have to sell in December. There's always a buyer. Yeah. You know, it yeah. just so happens that right now uh, the market is flooded with buyers and not sellers. And so the inventory is low. Yeah. Which is really creating um, – or has created. <laughs> yeah. I mean, uh, market conditions are always a factor and in influence yeah. when buying a house. Interest rates, economic, yes. uh, you know, it's an election year and that does have an effect. Absolutely. Um, yeah. yeah. You, you know, like you said, there may be people moving to Idaho from Massachusetts. Yeah. There may be people moving to another country. Who Absolutely. knows? Absolutely. Um, but like we said, there's always, there's always, you know, somebody moving. There's always somebody willing to buy and willing to sell. So Absolutely. Um, but yeah. And, and honestly, even people have complained about the interest rates and, you know, I bought my first house when it was seven and a half percent, you know, years ago. Hopefully nobody's like looking at my age, <laughs> 20 plus years, seven and a half percent. But before that, like 10 years before that, there was, the rates were like at 12 and 13 or higher percent. Yeah. So seven and a half percent really is not that bad. It's yeah. really a very competitive rate. We've just been spoiled by these really spoiled. dramatically low yeah. rates. So. Um, I would have I would have loved to get one of those dramatically. Low I know, rates, I know. But that's everybody. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> absolutely. But I did I did have a few buyers, you know, be able to get yeah, that's two awesome. and a half percent or something. Oh, lucky. <laughs> I know. And they're probably never going to move. <laughs> Why would anybody want to move with Why would anyone anyway, yeah. unless they're moving out of the country? Yeah. Or to Idaho. Or to Idaho. So. <laughs> I wonder if you have anybody in Idaho that you can refer. <laughs> Maybe through Buffini you can That's find right. somebody. <laughs> That's right. Um, we only have about four minutes left. So right. um, any last sort of thoughts on this or anything you want to touch upon before you give your contact information out to everybody? Well, I just, it's really, really important to hire a professional to help you because th this is just the tip of the iceberg. Yeah. You don't know what you don't know. Yeah. I mean, having been in business for over 20 years, there's, like I said, there's always something new that mm -hmm. happens. Mm -hmm. You never know yeah. like what, you know. Yeah. So um, without that um, wealth of knowledge from a professional who's done it many times, it's, I mean, you it, suppose you, yeah. you can try to do it yourself, but you're missing out on a whole wealth of information. So the other part that we didn't get to, and maybe you can come back sometime soon <laughs> is the legal aspect of oh, it too. Yes. So like we getting get into the nitty gritty and just making sure that everybody is, you know, abiding by the law. Yes. <laughs> and, you know, disclosures, disclosures yep. you know, we touched a little bit upon it about, you know, anything that needs to be disclosed that might, um, you know, deter somebody from purchasing a home or whatever. But, um, you know, there's just this whole legal aspect of it too that, you know, uh, the agent puts themselves out there as well. Yeah. You know? There's a lot of liability that you have to be concerned with yeah. as both a buyer and a seller's agent. So, you know, hiring an agent who knows what, you know, all the implications yeah. of everything. And you know? I know that you know all of the implications. So how right. can our listeners get in touch with you to hire you as their agent? Well, please give me a call anytime at 508, or not anytime, but 508-317-5729. <laughs> you can call, you can text, um, or you can email me at S, S and Susan Bollinger, B-O-L-L-I-N-G-E-R mm -hmm. at bostonconnect.com. Mm -hmm. And I'd be happy to help. Give your phone number one more time. 508-317-5729.
Um, and you can find all of her contact information on bostonconnect.com as well. We're always here. Not always. Huh? I'm, we're here. We're here. We're here a Most lot. of the time. We're here a lot. Um, so you can always stop by. We're located in the heart of Pembroke Center. I know you yes. love Pembroke. You've been, you I grew do. up in Pembroke. You live, yeah. you raised your family in Pembroke. And so, I'm on the school committee. And you're on the Third school committee. The <laughs> um, you're serving the town. Um, so we're we're located right in the heart of Pembroke on 19 Mattachusa Street. Um, and that's where our students is too so you can always stop by and say yes. hi to us when we're live on air We'd love um, to see you. but I appreciate you joining me tonight I, I know I asked you this morning hopefully I didn't take you away from anybody nope. um, especially any clients your family's fine they understand at <laughs> they this point <laughs> they get it, it. <laughs> uh, but thank you so much for, for joining me I will be back live on Saturday at 8 a.m. with Sharon McNamara broker owner of Boston Connect to real estate I don't know what our topic is yet but it's definitely gonna be about real estate and that's what we love talking about Absolutely. so um, thank you, everybody, for listening, and thank you, Sue, for joining me tonight. Thank you for having me. Bye, everyone. Bye.